Join us for Elements of Business, where we talk to local business owners about how they do what they do. Hi, Monica Kessler here. We are at the Clarity Bar right now at Appelt's Jewelry. Where do you put my diamonds? Diamonds. Appelt's Diamonds. Probably should have figured that one out. <laughs> Probably should have figured that out, but that's okay. We're, we're real. Here we're, we're real here. here. So it's yeah. great. We're but we're also here with Sarah. Appelt and Monica, which you know. Hello. And today what we're doing is we're introducing our elements of business. The inaugural seat, the inaugural episode. Yes. First one. You're the first one. You're the first one. Oh, the first one. We thought you'd be the perfect one for this. But what we're trying to achieve with the elements of business, we're not achieve, but what we want to communicate is business owners, we're all business owners here. We feel like we have an audience that really either is aspiring to own their own businesses or have their side hustles that they have going on. Um, and we just want to kind of encourage you. We want to encourage you as a woman. We want to encourage you if you're a man out there and you just need that extra boost of, hey, this is something I want to do. How do you do it? We want to talk about those things. We want to talk about people who are who are doing it out there, who are making things happen and, and how they're doing it, how they got there, um, what they experienced. So Sarah and I have known each other for a little while, but we most recently have gotten to know each other because she has trusted us yes. with her home on the Elevate side of things, which is spectacular to begin oh with. Gosh. And all we had Especially to do is- Really because of you. <laughs> you now have people over. It's my house, and they're not sitting on the patio for oh, no. oh, you're so amazing. No. Beautiful. Yeah, we were super honored. We were invited into her home and we were um, given permission to finish off the beautiful space she already had. And uh, still one of my favorite homes to this day. Every time, yeah, every time I walk in, I'm like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> but it's not beautiful because what we did was just beautiful because of the structure. It's anyways, it's all nice stuff. But I've been working with her now for a couple of years and have been honestly honored to be a part of her, her business and a part of seeing where her and her family have gone to. So um, when we were thinking of this, I thought it would be a really cool chat to have with Sarah because she's, she has a really cool story and she is honestly an inspiring woman. She's not just about selling jewelry. She's so much more. She wants to give back. She wants to raise up. She, the women that work with her, and I know you have some men too, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like your husband, um, but the people that she has working for her, they're happy and they're excited and they, they authentically seem to really enjoy what they do. And that to me as a business owner is, is awesome because not everyone can say that of their leader that they actually enjoy and are excited about what the person in front of them is doing. And so for me, I think that's an aspiration of mine that the people that work with me and for me love what they do and they see a bigger picture. Yes. And I think Sarah's done that as well. So thank you. Let's dive in. Those are very nice interrupts. <laughs> I know. I do what I can. I do. <laughs> yeah, let's dive in. So who are you? <laughs> My name is Sarah. <laughs> Okay, my title is perfect. <laughs> we were just talking about her title and how yes. it all evolved and it was very interesting. So it's because yeah. she works extremely hard. Yes. And so she had to get this title. Yes. But let's talk about that for a second. Because we went to a conference and we were it was a business conference. Um, and they talked about leadership and they talked about uh, a servant mentality. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't and I was talking with Monica about this when we were out there. It's a hard topic to talk about because I think in the world, the way the world is structured is if you're the top person, people are getting you your coffee. Right. People are yeah. folding your laundry. People are doing the nitty gritties that you don't want to do. But in reality, if you own a small business and you are, has, a small business is less than a hundred people is what right. I hear. Right. Less yeah. than a hundred people, employees. You're doing it all. You are oh, yeah. a jack of all trades. Yes. You are picking up what you have to do in order to complete the task. Is that kind of how you experience it, or? Yeah, it is. You can't like really nothing is above you, but you also because of who you are, every detail is important. Mm -hmm. So it's like two sides of it. But yeah. yes, and I mean it could be from like salting the sidewalk outside yes. to tagging Pandora terms in the office. To, yeah. Yes, it you just do everything. Yeah, and I think that's a. 
I hope that's a new trend amongst leaders because I think that type of leadership is far more impactful than the old school leadership. I was watching like a Hallmark movie yesterday. <laughs> what, don't my Hallmark movies? Shocking. Shocking. I'm shocking. Good times. I love it. Um, but in there, there was like this, you know, grandiose CEO. And of course, everyone was like tapping the dirt off his face. And he's like God, essentially. I'm like, gosh, that is really an old school way of thinking. Yeah, and I would yeah. never want to be that leader. No. I would want to help equip other people. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of something that you do here. Because I was even watching, I think your store manager, she was out like, Salting the the sidewalk, like I love that that you're ingraining that into your people as well too. I hope so. I mean, I feel like in in a sense that we attract those people. It's like we don't even really have to be like be like this. Yeah, they are those people. And when we hire, we changed everything, and we said, you know, you can really teach anyone to do any skill, yes. but you can't so change their heart. And when we interview, like those are the types of questions we ask because we want to know who they are. Like, are you willing to do the hard stuff? Yeah. The vacuuming, the paperwork, the stuff that no one else wants to do. Yeah. In order to help your team, and fortunately, you know, we've got there. I love that. To go through but it's also because there. you guys have led by example with that. Because I think oftentimes you don't get those people because if they see the higher ups not doing those things then why would they why you know when they get to positions of power per se like management or whatever they're like well i'm going to do what i see sarah doing or i see jeff doing or i see whoever doing yeah it's the culture that you've created yeah right? it's yeah. Really so is. that's they they see the owners the, the president doing mm -hmm. all of these things and then they it's not above me it's not above her it's it's a team effort and i think when you unveil you know open the curtains behind a lot of small businesses this is what you hope to see, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's very true. So, totally off of what we were going to talk about, but that's okay, because that's what we're here for. That's right. Um, okay, so, you're the president, Adpelt, awesome. What does that look like? What's it, what, what are the responsibilities and companies? with that like that it is a hard question to answer because as you know the title president it almost like comes with something attached to it but really like awesomeness that, like a, a crown, right? did, did you get a crown i didn't get the crown yet i'm no, not I, sure where it comes I, from. I said that she should be called madame president well, i think she should be referred to that we're like, i think it's like salted but i'm also still gonna have that title. with your yeah. crown on yeah. you can salt I mean, those so, things i have to buy my own crown though <laughs> I'll get on that. I'll get on you that. You got some yeah. diamonds you can throw on there. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like, if you think you're in the right company. <laughs> yes, you can find, find a couple. Right? Yeah. But I do yeah. think it is hard because as president, it's more, it's really just like a parent of kids and family. Yes. You care about each individual facet of it. Yeah. So every person, every store, every sale, there's different personalities, different things you have to work with and like you just want to be a part of it. You have a vision too, like I'm looking at things five steps ahead and I'm planning five steps ahead. You have to. You have to be in the moment but you also have to be watching. Yes, right? you can't be stagnant no. but you also you have to balance that because you can't throw stuff at your team that they're not ready for either as they're yeah. learning and training <laughs> and the steps that they're at and yeah. becoming experts then all of a sudden you know if you throw something at them so you have to be able to look forward be present yeah and work and learn from your past. past oh my gosh like it's such a right oh yeah like yeah. this work this didn't work and and encourage your team throughout it so yeah they don't feel like they're so set back that you know what I mean? It's true. Yeah. So I that's and that's the challenge I think of any leader, whether you are in management or whether you are the president of company or whatever. Those are some of the finer details that do make it feel a little schizophrenic. Sometimes <laughs> that is the perfect word. Oh, that is the perfect right? word. You just pulled in all yes. directions. So for other small business owners, like, is there a way that you you know in being in this role and being in this position, is there a way that you? you know, nail down the focus side of things where you can shift gears? Like, is there some sort of a morning routine that you've done? Like, is there anything like that? For Good question. I definitely morning routine, um, yes. And keeping to something that you can have that space to focus on mm -hmm. is really important for me. My mornings often start around 4.45. Oh, sweet Jesus. I know, right? No, mine do but... not start at that time, so you're welcome. <laughs> I, I am cozy in my bed at 4.45. <laughs> 
No, but I think that's so important. I do, so I am, and I, I, I am wish that a little ludicrous, and I'm not no, gonna lie. No, it's amazing. I, I wish. Husband felt the same way at first. However, you know, we both often are by five o'clock. Both of us will do like meditation, visualization, talk and that dream. Is so important. Yeah. Dive into that a little. Yeah. Bit. yeah. How's that? Oh, that is that changed things. Serious. For you. It's changed everything for us because. We now, there's a lot of journey behind this, sure. but to sum it up, we really realized how powerful your intentions can be. Yeah. Yes. So your mindset like and that. your yeah. intention no, and knowing like, even if stuff is not looking good or not going how you want it, you constantly have to be only like looking at what it should be, where you should be. And we will visualize, sometimes we'll spend 45 minutes just going, okay, where do we see us? What, what store we might be building, or you know, with the crystal bar, we would visualize what it would look like. Isn't this a lovely space, by the way? <laughs> Vision and right here. Okay, so love it. it. This yes. Is what you, yes. And yeah. it, we would spend time, and we'd be like, what, what, what speaks to us in mm -hmm. this? And we would start to envision what it would look like and what felt right, because that's so important and the direction of it, because it had to make sense, right? So mm -hmm. we talk about celebrating love and care yeah. and educating the customer so that when they're making a purchase, they're making the purchase with all the information. They're yeah. not relying on us to be like, this is the right thing for you. Sure. They can make it. We went to do that with crystals, and it was a natural progression, obviously, from yeah. metals yeah. and diamond. Sure. But we knew there's a healing component. Yeah. There's a different component to this and so for us when we were envisioning this it was really important that we respected the community of yeah. people that do work with community. this so yeah. it's a very strong community yeah. and we want to be respectful of that and, and for them to yeah. like know that we honor where it comes from and originates from yeah. I mean it's really cool but anyways to get yeah. back on to what you're saying like the those things the, the visualization yeah. and the intention is really important and knowing gratitude uh, we give gratitude before things happen. And like when you're looking for staff even, mm -hmm. there are times where we would spend, and specifically myself, up to, it could be like half an hour solid where I'd just be like, I am grateful that I have people that come into our company who want to make difference. I'm grateful well, that yeah. we have managers yeah. who care for their employees. I would just say it even though it didn't exist yet. Yeah. I'm like, I'm grateful that we have that coming to us, that it's yeah. in our house. And yeah. So There's something so powerful about that. And we were talking about this at the office the other day and just talking about the fact that when you don't have a goal or intention in your life, right? You're kind of just wandering aimlessly. What ends up happening is when opportunity comes your way, whether it be part of what is in your intention to have happen in your life. So you just don't even notice those opportunities, but when you place a goal or an intention in front of you, what I love about that is it opens your eyes to opportunity that you may have missed because you don't have something ahead of you to look at. And I think that's really important. And it also, on the other side, when opportunities right. come at you that are not right for you, yeah. and there yeah. are those, yeah. and yeah. they are dangerous, you also, because you know where you're going, you know what you're wanting, you're knowing what you're looking for, it's easy for you to say no. Yeah. Because it doesn't fall within you're the right. line of your intention. And that is equally as powerful as seeing the opportunity. Right, because I think there's opportunities everywhere, and I remember talking to someone who was a little bit indecisive and just like, well, I don't know what I want, I don't want. I'm like, that's the problem. Right, you don't know what you want, so every opportunity that comes at you, you're like, do I take it? Do I not take it? Do I take it? Do I not right. take it? Why? Because you don't have a clear place to land. It's like that with design. It's mm -hmm. like that with business. It's like that with your life. Have intent. It makes a massive difference on your day and on your life and where you actually end up. Yeah, right. So, yeah, no, you're right. And so, yeah. on that, um, one question that we had for you and, and for other small business owners is, what is that? What does that look like for you? What is that north why? star, north star, your why, that driving force? What What is that for you? Well, it's a good question, and I was talking it out actually with Jeff because I had you know some of the questions that I had. And it's interesting because the why for us is really important, and we often talked about eliminating fear. So when men would come in to buy a ring. What are the things, the obstacles? Like it's intense, it's intense because they have to spend money, they want to marry someone, they want it to be the right ring. And we talked about eliminating fear, but it just wasn't really 100% we're like who we want to be. And we realized 
who is a friend of ours who's a consultant with us, and he was like, Sarah, I keep hearing you say the same thing. You're talking about celebrating love. And I was like, yes, you're right. And so, and that was years ago now, but the one thing we go back to when we're dealing with customers is, is it about celebrating love? Mm, yeah, yeah. And that we know for us, every thing that we do here, we want it to be about celebrating love with our staff, right? With the customers. And even with training, you know, how are we using this to celebrate love? Which actually brings up a really cool point, which is when you have a clear defined why, and we've been talking a lot about this in our business as well too, because we are doing our strap planning for the next year and stuff like that. But when you have a clear why, it helps you make better decisions. Yeah. Right, same thing with the opportunities when you have intent. It's the same idea. When you have a really clear why, you make better decisions because you make decisions from the basis of why you're doing something, yeah. right? Instead of just making random decisions like, you, you make decisions celebrating love. If something that we're gonna, a product or a service that we're gonna bring in doesn't fundamentally hit that celebrating love aspect, it's not for us. And that's okay, that's not your focus. Right. But when you do everything from your why, and you have a why, can you explain a little bit in the sense of what do you, what do you think why means? Like what, let's say the average person out there who doesn't own their own company mm -hmm. or doesn't, or is starting to, is starting to or whatever, what would you define the why as? <laughs> your why has to be your grounding mechanism. It has to be the thing you go back to when you're making decisions. And it has to be what you go to when you're communicating. Like for example, if we're gonna roll out something, we'll, a new training procedure, they have to know why are we rolling it out? How does it benefit them and the customer? And how does it line up to celebrate love? Yeah. And it's funny because as you were talking, yeah. one of the things I find is people who come in from other organizations that are maybe more stringent, they'll be working here and you know, they might be reluctant to do something for customer. We'll be like, well, why didn't you just give them that or do this? Yeah. Like, why didn't I didn't? That, that's not what we're supposed to do. And one of the things we say in the celebrate love is it's people before policy. Love that. There's policy is a guideline to help people understand like proper procedures. Sure. But they're people and there's situations exactly. and you don't ignore that. <clears throat> and to get people to understand that, I find is actually surprisingly hard because they're like. Okay, so you wanted me to just do that? And we're like, yes. Yeah. They're like, we want you. Okay. <laughs> so like, I'm yeah. having a hard time understanding that right now. Yeah, of course. Because people aren't really used to having that level of autonomy, right? They're not. And, and especially in a corporate mm -hmm. setting, right? It's, right? it's not have to follow proper procedures. But if yeah. you start to put, like you said, the people first, then that's going to also switch the mindset of your employees. Yeah. And that's going mm -hmm. to have them, you know, their purpose is gonna be the people, the customer, yeah. the people that are yes. walking in. And so that starts to create that culture again. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I do, it's interesting yeah. to like get people, uh, it's surprising that you actually have to push people to be that way, but we're so used to having to be like strict, like no, you can't have that. And we're like, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. So it's interesting, that's probably one of our biggest struggles is to allow the autonomy for people to do yeah. those things. To go the extra one. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. I know, we, we always talk about um, in both in real estate and on the design side, you know, what we do is not transactional, it's relational. Right, because we believe you're, you're talking to people, whether you're selling houses or whether you're selling jewelry, there's another person on the end of that who's experiencing something. So you want to create the experience where they know that they're valued, that they're heard, that we see them. And I think that there's some power to that. If more businesses would do that, and even with your employees, mm -hmm. that they're seen, that they're heard, that they're understood, yeah. there is something that is so unique about that. And, I hope that that's a trend that's starting in the business world because I think it, it's a pretty powerful. It is powerful, and I almost I think it has to to succeed because it used to be different where like you came and clocked in and you worked for your boss and your boss would dictate and they work for you, but it doesn't really work that way anymore. And if you want to be successful and cultivate people who want to grow your business, you've got to engage them. Yeah. Like I need to ask my top salespeople, hey guys. Like, what are we missing here? Yeah. Is there something we don't understand about why this product isn't selling? Yeah. And they'll tell us, and we'll be like, oh my gosh, we didn't know that. Yeah. Like, we never asked them. Yeah, ask, it doesn't work. The customer, right? Ask, yes. what are you looking for? Like, that was something yeah. I think both of us, yeah. when we went to this business conference, it sounds so fundamentally easy, but it's like, what does your customer want? Right. Or, you know, we spend all this time coming up with mission statements and core values and, all these things that we think our customer wants, but really when it comes down to, 
what does your customer coming into your stores, what do they look for? The no fear. Yeah. For those men out there who are about to propose for the love of their life and hope to God they say yes and love the diamond that you've picked for them, yeah. what is their desire? What is it that they want? And you're right. They don't want to be afraid. They want to know that they want to have confidence. You know, they want to have confidence yeah. that that they that they're making the right decision, right? So that's yeah, neat. That and in your sense. world, the commitment, like you were saying earlier, is far greater than a vehicle, a house. It's it's a lifelong commitment that they're making to this ring, to this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see, like you see things that a lot of business owners don't see. Yeah. In terms of that emotion, right? It's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And so when you get your people to, to help with the empathy and, and giving back the confidence to their clients. Yes. It's huge. But I just want to interject there because I also wanted to talk to the person who I often find like for business owners, it's a little easier to think about why um, we do what we do and um, intent and stuff like that. But speaking to just the average person who's working in a factory or a janitor or whatever, do you have any advice for them on how they can create a why? And I was thinking about yep. this on the way here. So give me your I mean, I do personally because I feel like we've probably all gone through it at some oh, point. Oh, yeah. yeah, like different right. jobs. We haven't been here our whole lives. Right, so. and I know for me, I always had to find my why. But even I do this with my kids. Yeah. I'll be like, who do you want to be? Love that. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be kind? Do you want to be the one that they can go to when they need something and you yeah. can get it done? And like for me, I remember feeling that way and I would suggest for anyone who is kind of searching, be the one that they can go to and get anything done. Be willing to show up early, stay late and yeah. have fun. It, don't have it feel like, wait, make mm -hmm. it something that this is incredible to do. Yeah. And when you find the incredible in this and what you're doing, and I mean, it can be working in a factory, like yeah. I'll tell you, I did some nasty jobs. <laughs> we all did. Right? We all did. But yeah. you find, the cool factor about it, the incredibleness for you, and you have to just immerse in that. Yeah. And that's where I find they, they see you, like I, you will be found. It's yeah. not hard to see someone who's shining, right? That's true, and I think and I think the really, like well, I was thinking about it on the way here, I was thinking, well how does someone define their why when they don't feel like what they're doing is their, I get that a lot, I don't feel like what I'm doing is, I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. That's important, absolutely 100%. But I think a lot of it has to also come down to what are you doing with the resource that you're making from that unpassionate work that you're doing? Your why doesn't have to be, oh, I'm filling rocks into jars, therefore I'm passionate about it. Right, obviously. <laughs> but it can be, I'm making X amount of dollars and with that money, I'm going to make an impact here. Or with that money, I'm going to give it back to my yeah. family. Or I'm going to be able yeah. to produce a better lifestyle for them. With what I'm doing right now, it is a stepping stone to here. Yes. My why, it doesn't necessarily have to be involved with what you're doing. It has to be an attitude that you're directing your life with. My why, before I owned business, I was probably the last person on earth who I thought I would own a business. Mm -hmm. And I live in Winnipeg, let's be clear. <laughs> this was not my dream location. Love Winnipeg, great city, <laughs> but it's cold up in here, okay? Let's be clear. It is so, but, right here. Right? It's so all of us. Like, there's she so does. many of us. She's not from here either. I'm That's, from Calgary, yeah, yeah. Alberta. Which is apparently like much better than like, like, amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, Winnipeg's great. But, with that being said, when I was in university, I wasn't driven by, I'm gonna be a business owner and I'm right. gonna be this. My drive was, I wanted to make a difference in my world, not the world, because I think a lot of people get lost in that. I the world, really, right? The this world. Is good. <laughs> <laughs> not just recorded, right? Like, this is good. I like it's it. It's true. The yeah. world is too big, it's too much. But be a difference to your world. You have yeah. an influence, you have a group, you have people in your life that you can help elevate. Do that. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't know where that was gonna lead me. I thought I was gonna be like in advertising. Like, it's so funny, but when you have a why that just centers you at like, I just wanna make a difference. I just wanna be different. I just wanna be great in my world, whatever that looks like. I think that's enough of a why. It wasn't specific, but it was just that thing that kept me going. Right. That opened me up to opportunities. I love that. I, but yeah. I, what I will say though, because you said, you know, it's not about changing the world, about changing your world. Absolutely. However, when everyone adopts that mentality yes. Yes. and we change our world, we exactly. do change the world. Exactly. Right? It's a ripple effect, like you yeah. were talking about. Actually, earlier. that goes back to one of the whys, the, the one being celebrate love. The second why is we believe 
um, if you understand anything in the metaphysical world or in like the laws of attraction. So we believe that every drop of love, so to speak, creates that ripple effect. So as people come in and out of our life and in and out of our stores, our why, one of our whys is that you create that ripple effect. As they walk out, yeah. they can create another ripple effect. Yes. And that's important for us. Yes. So the love factor and the celebrate love is, that's the two things that we kind of stand on. That's I love that. See, that's really cool. So, okay, but we've unpacked a lot, but um, obviously you're a highly respected businesswoman, and there's a lot of people that are kind of starting out new, right? I'm a newer business owner. So what is the advice that you have that are from people behind you that are looking towards getting where you are? What is some what are some tips? What are some tangible things that you can, you know, if someone came to you and said, Sarah, I love what you're doing. I you know, how did you get here? What what tangible things did you implement in your life? What things what is it choices. Choices. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few there's a few things. I actually wrote some of those down when we were talking and one of them is you really have to be relentless and passionate. Mm -hmm. Like I literally have passion tattooed on my back. Love and that. I think that's part of the reason why I am doing what I'm doing. But you have to decide kind of like we said who you want to be, what you want to do, and you have to go for it. And sometimes you're taking baby steps. As long as you're moving forward, yeah. Mel Robbins does that uh, five second, yeah, five, rule. Says, five second yeah. rule where you count backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. And it's right. Like you, you remember, you five, dance four, three, two, like one. Go. Oh. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> Can we talk about this? No. Oh my god! The most At uncomfortable conference. thirty seconds of my life. At conference. Oh, oh yeah. Rachel yeah. Hollis is big about going five, four, three, two, one, and then music starts blaring. You have to dance like a crazy person, right. and I'm standing there like. Yeah, no, not my thing. Yeah. I dance at home all the time, but not like that. <laughs> not like an arena of six thousand people. You know, you know yourself. Yes, yeah. yeah. I know. It's exactly I'll get there. I'll what we're there. talking about. So yeah. it's it's the keep moving piece. So yeah. move and find people who believe in you. Yeah. They don't even have to necessarily believe in what you're doing. Yeah. But find people who believe in you who will be like Sarah. You know what? You're gonna figure it out. Yeah. If you need a shoulder to cry on or a glass of Prosecco, I'll be here with a bottle. <laughs> but you just need, you need to find your track, right? So building a support system. You need a support system. And then, and they don't even have to be people in business, just people who believe in who yes. you are. Yeah. And then I do, yeah. you need to, you do need to have that someone who can give you reality checks that you trust. Right, right. You know, right. that someone to bounce yeah. something off of. I'm fortunate that Jeff and I get to work together yeah. and I can bounce yeah. stuff off of him and he does other stuff in like real estate development and that and he'll bounce off of me and I know that's unique. Not yeah. a lot of married couples. So don't no, like that. they don't. So yeah, we're unfortunate. True. But I also have um, a director of operations and a director of sales and the three of us are very close. Yeah. And like I will say stuff and they'll be like, because I follow rule number two where yeah. you find your your core people mm -hmm. I know they believe in you <clears throat> so if I believe in it so much I'm like we have to do this they'd be like okay then we're gonna do it right you yeah, know right. so right. I think those are the biggest things for people starting out yeah <clears throat> for sure Pardon? that's kind of my thing that I, like when I people do ask me like, that's what I say, like find your tribe okay yeah. Take steps forward and find the people who can give you the reality check, but if they have to jump in with you, they still will. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's what yeah. you need. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny, actually. We took our kids to Frozen too, so if any of you haven't watched it, I'm not, no spoiler alerts here. But it was a really good movie, and actually, the, oddly enough, I derived a life aha moment in there oh. where there hey. was a moment. I was like, where the heck are you doing this? Um, but there was that part where she said, do the next right thing. Like, when you don't know yes. what to do, do the next right thing. Ooh, the that's next that's right thing. That's that's right. And when I heard that, I was like, dang, like that is actually yeah. so freaking true. Do the next right thing. If you're stuck, you don't know what to do, yeah. you're like, God, I hate my life or whatever. Well, because it do, becomes paralyzing. It becomes, yes. I, I feel like yes, I don't know. You can get stuck yeah, in Yeah, you get stuck because you don't have that dream or whatever. Just do the next right thing. Yeah. What's that next right step? Don't look. And I do this often even with staging when I started staging. I remember my first house, it took me eight hours. Yeah. Now we can do a stage job in two. It took me eight hours. And I remember sitting there and it wasn't a very big house and I had all this furniture, it was all just laying there. And I remember feeling like that over sense of overwhelm. I was just like, oh my gosh, like what am I doing? This is dumb, what? I was overwhelmed. 
But I remember from that moment on, I did one room at a time. Oh, yeah. Every single room. I never went and started one room and went somewhere else. Even now, I finish a room. Start to finish, done. Look at it, ah, done, next. Because, and I think a lot of people with really dreams good. or with visions or with what they want to yes. do or they want to be here and they're like, oh, I'm so yeah. far away. Absolutely you are. But what are the small steps that yeah. you can take to get one step closer? What's that next great thing for you? That Just that step. Don't worry about the big picture. Have the big picture in the back of your mind. But what? break it down to yeah. smaller chunks yeah. so that you can feel that level of accomplishment and not be overwhelmed by the bigness. That's, exactly. Right? That's fabulous. And oftentimes those next right things aren't the easiest either. Yeah. They're not. <laughs> They're the hard They're the ones where you're like, oh yeah. I'll Right, I'll get to that. <laughs> Pick up the phone, make yeah. the phone call, you know you have yeah. to. Like yeah, those exactly. are the things, right? Yeah. 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 So, so mm -hmm. um you touched base quickly on um lessons learned. Mm -hmm. We talked about that just very quickly. So I think a lot of times in, in small business we, we use the term failing forward. So yes. mm -hmm. what are some of those lessons that have helped you to fail forward? It's interesting. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I can give you like. Would you want an example? I'll give you. Yes. If you it, so, if you want to get into the details of it, you can. Yeah. Because there is. I'll give you. In for example, the Apple's Diamonds Bridal. When you purchase from a designer line, mm -hmm. it's really important for them that you carry their whole line. Okay. And often, what happens from designer when someone comes in to purchase a designer ring is they don't want to have it exactly from the showcase. There's, oh, there's a tweak, like 95% sure, sure, of the time. Sure. So we realized we had all this inventory and we weren't really offering the customer exactly what they wanted. And we were like, you know what? Like, this isn't working. But working with these labels weren't, weren't working either because they were very difficult to work with. And it led us to fall into some really stressful times because now we have Inventory. Or inventory. Ooh, we have not enough showcase space for other yeah. stuff we want to do. And we're like, what do we do? And we went through a real painful period um, that everyone in the jewelry industry dealt with was how do you deal with these lines who they won't take product back? They don't want to deal oh. with you well. Yeah. <clears throat> and we started talking about how can we actually help the customer properly the yeah. we can. Yeah. And what was born out of that was we decided that we would have our own designer line and yeah. We found a be amazing manufacturer who wanted to work with us from day one, Love wants that. to help the customer, That's and we beautiful. created Black Label because we were like, how do we help the customer better? How do we make it make more sense for our company? Yeah. And, and it's then, designed by a woman. And designed by women. So Most jewelry yeah, designed by men. Most jewelry, including engagement yeah. rings, which is for women, are designed by men. Yeah. Sarah? Woman designing yes. black label. How cool right. is that? I think it's amazing. It is very fun. It's very cool. God, I wish I had that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> designing <laughs> jewelry. Diamonds. Diamonds. Yeah. Diamonds. But it's it's yeah. surprising, you yeah. know, stuff like that. But there are things along the way, you know, that you make mistakes and you yeah. learn, you make mistakes, you learn. But like even with hiring people, like we mm -hmm. never hired outside of Apple's, for example, yeah. for management. Yeah. Now we realized, you know what, we're growing at such a place. Right. We yeah. need someone who manages and we're like, we don't even care if they managed a donut shop. Yeah. They just need to be managed. And then we started to cultivate these amazing management yeah. teams because we learned from failures and now we can move forward. But it's it's interesting how those, like for example, those two things are really huge in shifting our business into different ways. And and do those two things shifted your business. Did it also grow your business? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But well, when you have the right team, right? right. It yeah. just amplifies it. Yeah. Allows you to do more. It frees your time yeah. up from worrying about that particular thing, and allows you to harness your energy to where it actually is needed, right? And that's a valuable lesson too. Mm -hmm. Also being a little less control and that's true. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. also moving in small businesses away from the family, right? And, mm -hmm. and introducing new blood is, mm -hmm. is a huge step. Yes. But I find when people do that, they introduce new blood, yeah. new ideas mm -hmm. and expanding Different networks, experiences. right? Yeah. So I think that that's huge because again you want to hold on to yeah. the level of control yeah but oh yeah you do right well <laughs> that's so hard it's your baby yeah yeah right. yeah Absolutely. so that's that's a and no one is no one is going to love your product as much as you do yeah. obviously 
and, and care and, and cultivate, but when you can bring in the people, yes. Right. And that makes a difference. Now, let's bring it home to family. Oh my God. Now, Sarah here is a saint. She has five children. This is a hundred. Now, do you remember these children are not close in age? Yes. They're not. Close. You have two teenagers. Well, one adult actually yeah. now, a teenager. Yeah. And then three itsy bitsy ones yeah. under five. And okay, and two of those three under five are twins. Okay. Crazy. Tell me about okay, it. Where so is your crown? Like at this point. I don't exactly. Know, Are you but just collecting them or something? I love you guys. Like I'm a saint and a prince. I'm gonna get a crown and a big old <laughs> crucifix. I'm like, yes. Yes, yes. Um, where is my crown? I you know what, honestly, again, like it it takes a charm. It takes a I do have, village, uh, seriously. I have great people in my life who I'm so fortunate that helped me. And I have a nanny actually who's like become another, like, I, love I call, I, she should, I should say I sister, but she's her. actually, like my I've daughter. met her a few times. She's, she's amazing. amazing. But that's like the surrounding yourself yes. with good people day, yeah. night. And, and I, I uh, love that you, I love that you didn't just go, oh, I just like do it all. I just can't, like, <laughs> no, like, no, like, no, like, no, that's what I say. I do I it all by myself. No, like, <laughs> no yes, it's very real. I yeah. think that was, I got tremendously ill when I found out I was pregnant with my twins. I was in the hospital, literally hooked up to morphine drip. Good. I was not well. And no. I was like, what am I gonna do? You know, yeah. so when it came to the point where like I knew I had to come back into the business because we realized we needed to make a big change, I had to, you know, have that support system in place. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, in all honesty, I my kids, twins, went to daycare before they were 11 months old, and I, that was not my dream. No. I was going to be a stay-at-home mom. Right. This could make me tear up. I used to cry from daycare all the way to work. Oh, You know, but it was like, you know that there's like a greater good involved yeah. for everyone, but it, it is hard, and I know people would probably judge me for making that choice, and but it wasn't necessarily when I was like, yes, I'm doing this. It was more like a, I'm gonna do this. The next right step for you, right? But yeah, yeah, it was. Right? It was. The next thing you had to do to go. And yeah. I remember thinking, I'm gonna do this now so that one day I don't have to feel this way again. Yes. And I remember like driving to work being like, okay, crying it out and being like, now, now we need to make this happen. So yeah. I never have to feel that this yeah. way again. And I think like we're there, you know, now and into a different element of it, but that was huge. So balance. I, you know, someone, I've heard someone say this, I'm sure we've all heard this, but someone said this one time, it stuck with me, they said, you know, it's not about balance, it's, it's a dance. Yes. Absolutely. And it ebbs and flows. Absolutely, yes. And sometimes it's fast paced and intense, and sometimes it's slow and nice, yes. but with kids, you have to just go with the flow as much as you can. And sometimes you have to push them, and sometimes you have to stop. Yeah. And you have to not show up one day to work and just meet yeah. their kids. And sometimes that's just what it is. Yeah. So I'm trying my best to kind of always keep that in check. Yeah, that balance. And I think that's the that's the thing too. And and I I've talked to a, a couple of women now about this. And the other thing that I've noticed is there's different stages in life, right? Like as a woman, if you there's some women out there that are super motivated, super business focused, and they're like, no, not having babies. They get in the way, right? Absolutely, hundred percent. They get in the way. Well, they get in they, the way. They disturb everything. everything. But for those business women out there that want to have babies. Just think of it this way. You just have to adjust your goals a little bit, mm -hmm. right? It goes year by year. When your babies are born, it's a lot of work. You need to be there. It needs to be more life than work. As your babies get older and they can go to daycare and they can go, you can get a nanny or you can get help or they can stay with family. Your goals will change. Yeah. Don't be afraid to switch up your goals. It's a season yeah. and it's worth it. Yeah. My babies, and the other thing too, we talk about this all the time too. My life doesn't look like other people's lives. No. Right. And that's okay. Yes. I my kids don't know a Saturday at home all day long just sitting on right. our rear ends watching television. They don't know that. They do know we work for two hours, then we go do something fun, and then we go eat here, then we work for another hour, and then we go do that, my children know. But yeah. they also know what it takes to build something worth building. It's true. Right? And I think that's the thing for me. I feel my parents gave that gift to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started working when I was 11, and yeah. I don't yeah. regret it. It was hard work, and it yeah. was 
it was something that I look back now and I'm like, I am so grateful I did that. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful my parents yeah. made me. And I didn't have a choice. Like my yeah. parents were like, yeah, you don't get to go to Fun Mountain every day in <laughs> summer with the other kids. We can't yeah. afford to. Sure. So because we also can't take care of you, yeah. you have to get a job. Yeah. But yeah, it that's was why. great. Like yeah. it was good for me. And I'm not, I don't regret it for uh -huh. one second. Yeah. No, that's absolutely. a huge lesson for today's parents too, yeah. right? Because we're yeah. so into like, our okay, kids, our kids and you have to be happy yeah. and 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 giving your kids all of the things and and all of the, those experiences of happiness that last, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But when you break it down, you talk to this business owner and that, but like, mm -hmm. listen to their story. Where did they come from? Yeah, yeah. I'm right? sure they worked a little bit in their class. Absolutely, <laughs> to get there. to stay. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, it didn't serve them badly. I think all of us have come no. from that. Whether we saw our parents struggle or whether we saw our parents build a life for us or whatever, yeah. you know, there's a phrase out there that says work um, smarter, not harder. It actually drives me a little bit crazy. I'm all about efficiencies. But I am definitely I about efficiencies, though. right? No, working harder is part of working yeah. smarter because you're going to find efficiencies absolutely in your business. You have to, but it doesn't eliminate your need to work hard. Yeah. Like to build anything worth building, it's going to be work. Don't think, oh, I'll find a cool system and everything will just flow. Right. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Right? And so I, I think there's. There's something to that, and that's something I want to pass on to my children as well, too, yeah. is as a working mom, I want to incentivize them in the sense of, guys, look, like, I do this not because, I mean, there are my days where I come home and I'm like, why do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> like, let me clear. Have yeah, exactly. Have but then I also bring it back to guys and building something. I believe yeah. in my clients. I love working with them. I love helping and serving and, and advocating for them. This is what I love yeah. to do. Find that. Yeah. Do that. And I hope that my children do that with them. I hope that they don't look at other families and go, why can't we have a whole weekend off where we do nothing? Right. <laughs> not in the Tesla home, you will not. <laughs> it's true. But, and then make the life that you want, right? Yeah. Don't be afraid to try to be like the Joneses. Create the life. If you have a vision or a dream and you know that that's going to change your family dynamic, get the family on board and create that life. Create what that family is going to look like. My my children still love me. I think <laughs> <laughs> they still no, spend time with me. Right? They understand the the what goes into it fundamentally the hard work, mm -hmm. but they also understand the payoff. Absolutely, mm -hmm. going right. on vacation, yeah. going away they for the weekend. Understand that rest is part of it. Yeah. yeah, and when we leave the city, we rest. Yeah. Absolutely, right. 100%. When we're here, we work. Yeah, yeah. and that's exactly. just the reality of it. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with Not that. Not at all, right? So no. yeah. Um, what was uh, we had? We didn't need mom. She keeps us on top of things. Me, I just ramble on about. It's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm only here as like a media. Really. <laughs> She's um, gonna temper me. Um, when you say mediator, I feel like should we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please, you know, yeah, exactly. please, yeah. um, crystals. Yeah. Um, I need to. I need to. No, we, we, we. need to touch base on something because you're a, a mentor to people. Whether yeah, you know that or not. absolutely. So, who do you look ahead to? Is there someone that stands at all? It's so funny. Like we, we were just briefly talking about that. I don't. I've never had a mentor, and unfortunately, I I come from working also in a large corporate organizations. Mm -hmm. And I found it very difficult yeah. because they they tend to be catty and mm -hmm. mean and cutthroat. Yep. And, and it was like, can't you just be nice for a second? Yeah. Like, I think I could still learn that same lesson. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yelling at me. Wow, okay. Yeah. And I feel like when I, I saw that, I remember, actually I remember the place I was too, and I was like, I am not going to be that person. Mm -hmm. And for me, mentors have come through different inspirational moments of people. Yeah. And I think that's where it's really come from for me. And I would have to say, like, at first it makes me sad, but then I'm like, no. Because I've drawn from so many good examples and people who have pushed me to be something and they may never know it, but yeah. it could have just been one encounter. Yeah, absolutely. That did that, you know? I think too, like, I think people get it twisted too. I think it's so important to not only have people to look up to and say, that's where I want to go. Mm -hmm. I think it's equally important to have people to go, oh yeah, no, I never want to be where you are. Absolutely. That's really true. That reminder, right? Where, mm -hmm. oh, try not I, to be the latter though, please. Try not to right. be that person that be like, ew, gross, no, never. No. Right? Well, check yourself. Check right? yourself. <laughs> like, am I, am I the kind of person yeah. that people 
want to exemplify their life around yeah. it, or, or are there components that are, you know, traits that I bring into people's lives that they're like, oh, Sarah or Monica, they do this, and I, I really want to do that, or oh, they do that, and mm-hmm. right? right? Like, but we have right. those people in our lives that yeah. that. I'll never treat someone the way that you just said, yeah. right? right? Yeah. I'll, I'll, those are equally important lessons, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. yeah, I'll never make someone feel the way you just make them feel. Yeah, right. I yeah. love that. Yeah, um, and I think that's actually what drives a lot of people yeah. like to do start businesses, yeah. right? Is you see, like they often say, you know, see a need and fill it, and that's what business is based on, right? You see a need and you do it, and I think it's the same thing. Like often leaders are born from. I know I started in real estate because I had a horrible realtor who literally shoved me into a house that he knew had basement issues like I'm talking structural rivers flowing yeah, in my oh basement my oh yeah it was there. and he was just tired of looking at houses with me so he shoved me into a house didn't care about the end result and from that moment on I didn't start in real estate until a few years later but I remember that feeling feeling mm-hmm. when I saw those rivers in my basement and going what did I do why didn't he help me that right there was enough for me to say never, never again. When I work with a client, they will never say to me, Monica, you shoved me into a house. You made me buy this house because you were tired of working with me. Absolutely not. Right, and so oftentimes that's where these things are opened up is by noticing things you dislike. Same thing with brokerages. Don't get me wrong, there's some really great brokers out there, but I wanted to start something different. I wanted a brokerage where people knew the brokerage and knew that the the broker, the, the realtor, and then the broker is behind you. They're invested in you. They want more for you. I wanted that. And I wanted other realtors and other brokers around us to see that difference. And that's what we're building. And that came from not coming from terrible brokerages because my brokers were good, but just experiencing the difference and I think that's that's key right? yeah and that's oftentimes where you can find your why too right and, and I uh, another thing too is your mentors don't have to be people you know no. right they're no. they're authors of books yeah, yeah exactly they're motivational speakers and, mm-hmm. and a lot of you know people in that realm will say the same thing mm-hmm. my mentors I've never met them no mm-hmm. but they've exactly. spoken truth to yeah. me through these words through these podcasts through whatever that mm-hmm. would be that leads me to my next question um are there any books that that you've read what are your like those top oh kind? my gosh yes it's okay. so hard to narrow that down okay. i listen to uh, probably a couple i audiobook everything so yeah. i've some here for so this. i do probably a couple books a week but the ones that stand out to me there's a book called the advantage by patrick lencioni oh i've seen that one yeah yeah i read it when i was like an inventory worker when my first job was and I don't know why, but it like inspired me. And I'm like, there was no way I was like owning a company at that point. Yeah. I was like, not at all. But anyways, that book I've listened to through the years over and over again, the biggest thing was get the right people on the bus going in the right direction. Love that. We always talk about mm-hmm. it. We're like, if they're not on the right bus and they're not going in the right direction, yes. get off our bus. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, yes. you know, and that's one of the yeah. things I always took from that. There's much more, but yeah. Patrick Lencioni, the event. Yeah. Um, Greg Braden. There's a book called The Divine Matrix. Okay. And that is everyone who should read that book. Really? Yes, because he really talks about the evolution of life on Earth and humans and how powerful our heart and our mind are when they work together mm, and how we really impact the world around us just by our thoughts. Wow. And like when you really, like I just got shivers, when you really, really understand how everything you do reverberates out yeah. from you. You yeah. just choose more wisely I love that. how you live. And yeah. like that book, I'm like anyone, everyone and everyone should read that book. Perfect. Cool. Um, and I do, what is my last one? Hold on, I have not half a Merton done. You haven't even referred to your notes yet. So I know. Well done. I'm listening to you and I'm like, go girl, go. Because <laughs> these books were very important. I was like, you guys need to do these. And we will reference them too. Yes. Um, oh, I know. Yeah. The law of attraction. Ah, so okay. you guys, yes. you know the secret, like the blog yeah, or yeah, whatever? Yeah. So the law of attraction is done by Esther and Jerry Hicks. Okay. And they're like the originators kind oh, of it. Yeah. And at first I was like, I'm never going to listen to some of their And I listened and I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Because it's really like about living in gratitude, living in thanks and living in love and like knowing that that's what returns to you. Like yeah. if... Those are the three books. And like, if anyone wants to listen to them to start business, do those. That's amazing. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think some people get really like, oh yeah, gratitude, that's good for some people. But I think to tangibly see, you know, successful businesses built around these principles. Successful lives. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, right? Just, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I think that that is so huge for the, the you know, solopreneur, the newpreneur, all of that. If you if, if you can do one thing, do that. Yes. Right? Just yes. just start and, there. And even not even like this is something that Rachel Hollis does a lot with her journaling or whatever. But just not just being grateful for my husband, my children, my yeah. house, but looking every twenty four hours. There's something to that. And saying, what am I thankful for? What's happened within the last twenty four hours? You know, I met a really nice, kind soul today. I um, I'm thankful for the fact that whatever. But looking at it, not as just a whole like you do at Thanksgiving time, but looking at it every single day and going, what am I thankful for today? There's something to that again, it's putting intent to your day to look for those things because then when you do it tomorrow, you wanna be sure that you're noticing what you're thankful for around today and it does, it elevates the whole way that you think. You yeah. find what you look for. It's yeah. absolutely you find what you're looking yeah. for, yeah. right? Yeah. So, it's true. this has been great. Thank you. Thank you. You're amazing. Well, you guys are, I'm having fun. You are so wow. funny. Yeah, no, I'm really honored that you did this and that um, that you trust us with what you trust us with as well too and that it was, uh, we started off by just talking how it's so hard to find women who operate businesses and one thing I love about you and every time I come here is your people are excited and you bring with you an energy the minute you walk into the room of just excitement. And so for that, I'm very thankful to know you and I'm really thankful to have you in my life. And um, and yeah, you're inspirational. So thank you. So anyways, thanks for joining us for our first episode of Business, no, nope. Elements of Business. business. Elements of business. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> totally not that. We'll get have this a great right. day. We'll get this right, guys. <laughs>